the same corporate media that openly takes orders from communist China is now criticizing our president-elect Donald J. Trump for daring to simply talk to the newly elected first woman president of Taiwan when she called him to congratulate him. They're saying that it's a unwritten policy since 1979 that U.S. presidents don't talk to Taiwanese presidents, even though we have a defense treaty since 1949 with them that we signed with Chiang Kai-shek, who was kicked out of China by the communist Chinese. Who is illegitimate is the communist Chinese that have killed 80 plus million of their own people and keep them in slave conditions and have have suicide nets around their Foxconn laboratories for Apple and mobile execution vans and execute hundreds of thousands of Falun Gong every year and sell their organs on the global market. That's who's lecturing us that we can't talk to a president all because Jimmy Carter signed a deal to sell us out to him in 1979. And in the upcoming report you're about to hear, I detail the history of those facts. All I can say is Trump is continuing to deliver on Americanism, not globalism, and is acting like an actual president, and I salute him. I want to break down the China-Taiwan situation from a historical perspective that, again, is incontrovertible. What I'm going to break down here is a fact that is even in mainline history books, but is not taught on the History Channel or on the nightly news in general. Sometimes the History Channel has actually gotten it right and told the truth. And that's where we start. 1949. The communists had been around since the 30s. They'd taken over some of the mountainous areas uh, in China. They had held out during World War II. And at the end of World War II, they became allied with the uh, then brand new CIA that had come out of the British OSS. And basically, even a lot of U.S. intelligence officers and army officers got arrested by the communists because they wouldn't go along with the full takeover of the country and they themselves were tortured, they were killed. Uh, Many of the Christian missionaries that were there uh, were also captured and killed. And of course the John Birch Society is named after John Birch uh, who was captured uh, and tortured to death uh, for not supporting the communists. And our government completely turned a blind eye to all of this. Now it's a huge history I'm going to stop there with what happened in 1949. But if we fast forward to 1979, by then deals have been made behind the scenes via Henry Kissinger and George Herbert Walker Bush, who was then ambassador to China. Of course, he'd also been uh, director of the CIA to make a deal economically with China to give them the rare earth minerals, to give them the, the Panama Canal, and to give them control of resources as long as they didn't become military dominant uh, in the surrounding areas of Asia, like the South China Sea, and as long as they didn't uh, menace Japan. This is all mainline history, folks. Now, of course, from the beginning, China was double-dealing the entire time. Now, fast forward to 2016, China has 97.5% of rare earth minerals that you need to make basically any computer device or electronics. That's been done by design. The West just doesn't touch it, doesn't mine it, doesn't go after it because there's a corporate global treaty, just like TPP, unratified by governments but followed, okay? So fast forward to the globalist operative uh, who was following this whole plan of Kissinger and Brzezinski, 1979, who's president? You guessed it, Jimmy Carter. Jimmy Carter signs a deal to hand over the Panama Canal, the eighth wonder of the world, to the communist Chinese. He then signs a deal to give them all the major deep water ports that the U.S. had previously had in the world and to give them access to all of our refueling stations, previously known as coaling stations. Again, the globalists are making a deal to use Chinese slave labor to leverage out the planet's uh, other uh, major economic uh, and industrial operations to create an economic 
consolidation, vertical integration model. This is globalism. China is the key. That's why they say China is the new century. America and the West is declining. China is the future because the deal was made because they were authoritarian to transfer all power to them because they would then side with the globalist in the phase we're now entering to establish an open world corporate government. Now, enter Donald John Trump, 45th president, elect of the United States of America. Trump is being advised by Mad Dog Mattis, who is a brainiac, huge reader, huge understander of this, big anti-communist. He's being advised by General Flynn. I'm not going to go over all the advisors, but Trump already knew this as well 40 years ago. This was huge scandals back in the late 70s, huge scandals in the 80s that the Republican Congress, even with Reagan, allowed this to all go through. Because it didn't happen right away just because you know, Carter, the peanut farmer, signed off on it. So, we're in 1979. They get the Panama Canal. They get all these other concessions. They're just given everything. China could barely even operate. China was third world in almost every sector of its entire country. But now they're going to be given the deal. Corporate taxes are raised to the highest in the world in the United States and Europe. So you cannot compete here. Where do you go? China. So over the next 30 years, that all accelerates. That brings us to about 10 years ago. Taiwan is where Chiang Kai-shek, the nationalist, fled in 1949 when the CIA and the United States government betrayed him. That's even since been on the History Channel. That's now admitted. The John Birch Society said that in 1956 when they were founded. It was proven over a decade ago and declassified. Look it up for yourself. They have, hit, they have History Channel shows on it. You name it. Uh, they gave Chiang Kai-shek you know, rifles that, that didn't have firing pins in them. Remember all that? So, and they gave all the intelligence on even how to arrest members of the U.S. Army and people that were there uh, because even elements of our own government didn't know, so there was different factions in our own government. So this is the high treason selling us out to the communists you know, in China for command and control. So they all flee to Taiwan in 1949. It becomes the nationalist hub. We give them weapons. We have defense treaties with them. All this goes on. Going back to 1979, the sellout, not just the Panama Canal, not just the agreement on rare earth minerals and mining, not just all the agreements on textiles and everything else. No. Now, 1979, Jimmy Carter says, we're no longer going to talk to the president of Taiwan. We're not going to recognize them. But we still had a defense treaty, so okay, we'll sell them weapons. But we won't sell them weapons that they can actually uh, you know, defend themselves with properly. We'll sell them out-of-date crap. Now, along comes Donald J. Trump, and he says, hey, this isn't business as usual, where China owns our debt and China lectures us, and every major Hollywood movie you see has weird propaganda in it about how Chinese science is why we're able to go to the moon or Mars. or I mean, every movie you see, like The Martian, you name it, we don't have boosters at work, and it cuts to the Politburo with big, big red flags waving in some cases with actual members of the Politburo, and they save America in every major movie, uh, from the arrival to the Martian, to you name it, uh, and, they, and they stop U.S. films from coming out, like Red Dawn 2, and cut China out of it. They're, they're buying up all six Hollywood studios as we speak and bragging they've captured us. They make Obama get off the back of the plane, treat him like total crap, tell him, screw you, Americans. Remember that three months ago? This is all part of their out-of-control, insane arrogance, and they've broken the deal with the globalists and are now militarily expanding into Africa, into Latin America, into the Caribbean, into all areas of the Pacific. But again, Kissinger and others are happy because they were always part of the double cross against America. Let's continue. So there's the New York Times, there's the Washington Post, there's CNN. How dare Trump, a president-elect, take a phone call? First they lied and said that the first elected woman to Taiwan, uh, she won in a landslide. Uh, she's a pro-nationalist, uh, a party, very, very popular, but also you know, liberal in a lot of their policies. So, so they're bipartisan, very well balanced. She calls him, he takes the call, he knows full well what he's doing. She congratulates him, he congratulates her. And then the media acts like, how dare this buffoon screw us over and anger the Chinese that are now in the news lecturing us and getting in our faces. And Trump tweeted, funny we sell them billions of dollars of weapons a year, but then we won't even take their president's phone call. This is disgusting. Then the media spun him like he didn't know what he was doing. Trump knew exactly what he was doing. He said, we're going to be treated with respect. We're not going to have one-way streets with China anymore. They've broken their deal even with the globalist, And the American people didn't sign on to that deal with the globalist. So there's a basic snapshot history 
of what's really going on with China. And as Christ said, the people perish for lack of knowledge. You will know the truth that will set you free. And if people want to know the truth, if they want to be set free, they can study history and understand that basically, if you look at globalists today, they said they want to replace human workers with robots so they can dictate the terms of human surrender to the technocracy. Well, before they had robot factories, they had a billion Chinese. Back then, it was like 900 million in the late 70s. Now it's a billion, 300 million, okay? And that is basically the biological android army of the globalists, that, that, that's how the globalists, the technocrats, see them. They see us as subhuman. They see the Chinese as subhuman as well, to just build all these widgets and different things so the West would sell out its industrial capacity to communist China, and that's now happened. And President Trump is breaking through that, as he's promised to do, and is bringing jobs back to America, and is standing up for our nation, and is standing up for our republic, and doing absolutely incredible things, and that's why they're panicking, that's why they're so upset. Yes, the President of the United States can call Taiwan, and can talk to their President, and if the President of Taiwan calls him, he can talk to her. This is ridiculous to show how these terms are being dictated to us and how our corporate media are such incredible lapdogs to foreign interests bossing us around and telling us what to do. That's globalism, and it's coming to an end with Americanism, not globalism. Look, I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese-style net censorship was coming to the web, because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You gonna sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you gonna be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action. Controvertible. What I'm going to break down here is a fact that is even in mainline history books, but is not taught on the History Channel or on the Nightly News in general. Sometimes the History Channel has actually gotten it right and told the truth. And that's where we start. 1949. The communists had been around since the 30s. They'd taken over some of the mountainous areas uh, in China. They had held out during World War II. And at the end of World War II, they became allied with the uh, then brand new CIA that had come out of the British OSS. And basically, even a lot of U.S. intelligence officers and Army officers got arrested by the communists because they wouldn't go along with the full takeover of the country, and they themselves were tortured, they were killed. Uh, many of the Christian missionaries that were there uh, were also captured and killed. And, of course, the John Birch Society is named after John Birch, uh, who was captured uh, and tortured to death uh, for not supporting the communists. And our government completely turned up, and though we have a defense treaty since 1949 with them that we signed with Chiang Kai-shek, who was kicked out of China by the communist Chinese. Who is illegitimate is the communist Chinese that have killed 80 plus million of their own people and keep them in slave conditions and have, have suicide nets around their Foxconn laboratories for Apple and mobile execution vans and execute hundreds of thousands of Falun Gong every year and sell their organs on the global market. That's who's lecturing us that we can't talk to a president all because Jimmy... The same corporate media that openly takes orders from communist China is now criticizing our president-elect Donald J. Trump for daring to simply talk to the newly elected first woman president of Taiwan when she called him to congratulate him. They're saying that it's a unwritten policy since 1979 that U.S. presidents don't talk to Taiwanese presidents. E. Carter signed a deal to sell us out to him in 1979. And in the upcoming report you're about to hear, I detail the history of those facts. All I can say is Trump is continuing to deliver on Americanism, not globalism, and is acting like an actual president, and I salute him. I want to break down the China-Taiwan situation 
from a historical perspective that, again, is in 